I know. How good is this, guys? It's we like borrowed a disco it. Ball. So good. It is like a disco oh, ball. Wow, hang it up. Woo! The party never stops. <laughs> also, how hilarious. The national wedding show. I'm not even getting married, but I like to have That's this That's really back. sweet. People might think you're Maybe a bride. You're gorgeous. A <gasps> bride. I didn't notice these in the picture you sent me. Yeah, really. And it's velvet. And Velvet. I'm like a holy church mouse. Is that what you're kind of I'm channeling at the moment? Yeah, none. Because you've chastity. been a little bit loosey loosey, goosey woosey. Loosey goosey and also a little bit um down in the dumps. Angry. Yeah, no, this has not been my week, guys. The main emotion I would say has been anger. <laughs> this is distracting me. Babe, very, very good. Wait, oh, babe, you, you haven't got rid of those packages yet. That's what we're gonna say. We've gotta go do that now because I've got people <laughs> messaging me saying, Where's my stuff? I'm also starving. Well, by the way, guys, okay, well, okay. What? <laughs> by the way, what? I was gonna say we're fresh from the maths party which is why our brains are a bit scrambled today. Do you know what? I don't even feel hungover. Do you? I don't feel hungover. I've just got a headache, a dry throat and I can't think. You do feel hungover. <laughs> So, you got all the symptoms of a hangover. When I have a hangover, it's like game over. Cancel the day, cancel the weekend. Cancel my life. Cancel my life. But I don't feel like that. I just feel a bit slow around the block. Yeah, no, I don't. I feel good. I'm kind of functioning though. Did you go to the gym this alcohol. morning? Yeah. <gasps> Left the house at 7.30. You're sick in the head. I'm sorry. That is not right. Gotta move the body. Yeah. Well, there's so much goss to tell you. Not even. I wanted way more goss from the maths party. None of the um, cast the were there. Here's the problem is that none of this year's cast were there. And I know yeah. why. It's because it has hasn't aired and they obviously all hate each other. Or they just, yeah, they didn't want anyone to like see. The dynamic. Exactly. Because we we'd have been spilling spill the tea. It. Yeah, we would, obviously. Have, we would have broadcasted it from the tops of the rooftops. There weren't that many like really interesting people there. We met Adrian from last year. He was hilarious. I was taking hey, a picture of Al. was really bugger boring. Pasta in the jar. Sorry. Anyway, I was taking this picture of Al and I was using the flash because the lighting wasn't amazing. And then Adrian from Maps comes over. Lost hilarious. He goes, wait, wait, wait. Puts his little baggie down, gets out this huge LED light and just starts shining on Al. And suddenly she looks like she's on like front cover of Vogue. It was so funny. It was really. And then that's why we got that one good pick of us. Yeah. So anyway, now we're going to buy one so that we can deliver the goods all the time. Yes, good. This pasta in the jar is for Sam. Lovely Sam came to my spin class on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell me! And he swore, pasta in the jar, Sam. He swore at you? He said the F word. To your face? To my face. Did he say? And he said, oop, pasta in the jar. No, he didn't tell me to F off. Why would he have told me to F off? I think he was saying how effing amazing we were. Oh, really? Or how effing amazing... Wait, tell me about what... Or how effing hard spin was, I can't remember. So tell me what happened with him. He just said, oh my God, I love you. He just you. came to spin. Cute. No, not me, us. Is this your new ring? Yeah. It looks good. Who's it from? Mads. Handmade by Mads. Handmade by Mads, it is. Gorgia. Handmade by Mads sent us these gorgeous rings. It's definitely more my aesthetic than Al's, I would say. Yeah. And I love, and they're crystals, so I feel very centered. I did put my crystals by my bed, but then I I couldn't sleep. And Have I you charged them? In the moon? Mm. No, not well, yet. Well, that'll be why. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said her all. I charged some water. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? So you put a glass of water outside. <laughs> in the moon? Yeah. In the full moon? And he was like, Bob, the new moon. why is that? No, full moon. It's got to be right. in the full moon. So that the moonlight can charge the water. And then water. do you drink the water? Yeah. And it's supposed to sort of like cleanse you from inside out. Clearly hasn't worked. And Clearly. <laughs> no, this week it's been. Can you drive to the end post locker so then we can eat? Because my God, I'm actually like ravenous, like in a bad mood ravenous. Oh, right. Okay. It's quite well, serious. Well, let's get moving then. But you know you... the Snickers advert isn't but, wrong. But what do you want to eat? Uh, honestly, at this stage, anything. Can I tell you what I would like. Oh, it's a neutral one. I'm oh. going to go anywhere. What I would like, but I don't know if you're going to be... turn left here for I don't the know impost. if you're going to be DTF because they're about £17 per pop. Joe and the Juice? Yeah. Yeah, I could fudge with that. I could get a Joe and the Juice panini. Yeah, I could have a panini. And then I could get a little juice. Yeah. My week has just been not my week, you know? Everyone has those kinds of week. Everyone is like against you. Everyone in You've the You've been a bit irritable, so are you PMSing? Yeah, well, I woke up with my, my nipples were sore on, on Tuesday and I thought oh, that yeah, would be it. Yeah. But I don't know, I was kind of like hoping for a good, good, joyful week and it just has been far from joyful, apart from last night, obviously. We had a joyous time. We did, it was really, really it fun. It was a really good event, guys. It was like, you. we go to a lot of them. Well, yeah. not a lot. We don't no, go but to we go to enough them. to compare. Yes, and you know when they've got budget and when they haven't. And Channel 4, yeah. Maths and 2, big, big budget. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh my God, how annoying. I could have done this like earlier but this But we're week. here now. I know, but now Panic I know. Panic yourself about no, it. No, but now I know. Is it out of Who's it coming to? Hold on, I've got a... Something coming for you! Okay, her name's Amy. Go on, Amy! Amy, I'm so sorry this took me so long. It's coming your way, Ames. Well, she'll be ours. Don't know what to talk about when I'm on my own. Oh, come on! She's really stroppy this week, guys. But we're just giving her loads of love and attention. Come on, then. 
She's just taking it out on the enclosed locker. <laughs> Slamming that door. She looks cute and innocent, but she's not. Done. Good work, babe. Move it along. Sweet little socks. Sweet, right? I've got to get a picture of you in that. I know. Very cute. Looking like a church mouse. Yeah. <laughs> right, off to Joe then. No, so what else have we got to say about um, last night? By the way, someone messaged me and was like, I'm getting married there. They were like, is this Trinity Boy Wharf? And I was like, Good, yeah. good location. And I was like, oh my God, you're going to have the best wedding ever. Yeah, they will because you're right by the river. Yeah, and it's really beautiful. If you do it, if you set it up really beautifully, imagine like the whole thing with fairy lights. Yeah, and, and also it's a blank canvas, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you can turn it into anything. That's where they film Married at First Sight. Babe, and you know... Oh, shit. Sorry about that. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'll just hold on to this. <laughs> and call my mum and say goodbye. We met Charlene, actually. She doesn't get enough airtime. She's a good time girl. She had a lot of things to say about sex and intimacy and how to ask for what you want in the bedroom. Like, she was very interesting. She was interesting and she's very personable and she's yeah, quite funny. She's kind. She's got a very nice voice. Soft, Do soft voice. Yeah. Softly spoken. Yes, that's true. That it was actually true. really rowdy. Everyone was no, quite the left. number of glasses that were broken. Being smashed. I would say they're going to have to pay for 50 glasses to be Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of booze going around. That's why I think they had a big budget because there was a lot of oh, fizz. That's true. Lots and lots of fizz. Lots of booze. Lo Loads of booze. And the knaps. They the knaps. They would have been expensive because they were. They were 10 10. I don't often like a canopy. Me neither, but those I think 10 it's 10. pointless, but that was good. And I felt like I'd had a full meal after 10 of them. Oh. Very good. Otherwise, nothing really to report. Adrian and Janita were the only really people of note. Of real interest. Yeah. Janita, gorgeous, sad about her and Jordan. He wasn't what he promised to be. I thought he was quite nice last year. On a... In real life? Yeah. Or on the show? No, in real life afterwards. Oh, well, I'm sure that happened. Scumbag. I might have just made that up. Oh, I'm right, pretty okay. sure. Well, then, yeah, he's not right, is he? Genuinely decided I think cheating should be illegal. Yeah, it does. Like prison. Oh, really? Yeah. Well. Or community service, at least. <laughs> no, bin service. You've got to do the you council's bins. You've got to do the bins. You've got to clean up after the foxes. Because that is a pit's job. I can't get comfy today. Oh, you got to wind that back. Go on, wind it back and have a little nap. This is new. Yeah. Very nice. Where's it from? ASOS. I don't know what the brand is on ASOS, sadly. Really nice. Thank you. Okay, so do you feel like you're in a better mood now or not really? Yeah, but I've got to tell you the story that will blow your mind, right? <sighs> Ready to be blown away. So, my friend. Sorry, you're going to go tuna or chicken? Chicken abo. Very I think good. it's chicken abo mozzarella with pesto. It's got to be the one. Oh, no, it's turkey. Can I say I love turkey? I, I don't actually like roast turkey. I just like, you know, there's like really skinny. Do you? Oh, you know, they're probably quite bad for you. They're like, yeah, like water. Crap. Yeah, yeah it's just I, water. I love it. It tastes like salty. I love a turkey sarnie. Yeah, lush. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have the spicy tuna, I think. Oh, that one's good too. Really good. Yeah, that's good too. Okay, carry on. We're having drinks, all of us, me and my school friends, on the weekend. How many of you are there? Honest left? friends. Your school friends. Well, there are loads of us, but they're all around the world. So on Friday. Like a genuine group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like eight or nine. And I've then... honestly got two friends from school. No, but you, really? Two friends from Holly. my secondary school. Holly and Margot. That's it. And then I've got three friends from sixth form. But then if I, uh, two plus three is five. I've got five <laughs> friends. Five whole friends. That's rich, considering that you're already like busting for numbers on the table. Faye didn't go to my school, so she doesn't count. Oh. Um... She's a stagecoach friend. Uh... And we used to do, it's a hard knock life for <laughs> us. No, how many of you were there? There were five of us. Lovely. And my friend has just broken up with her very long term boy. The better part of the story is that she's now shagging her colleague. And don't no. dip your pen in the office ink. No, but listen, when I say this man has abs, I mean, honestly, he could chop wood with them. Can I say something controversial? I don't like abs. I don't like an ab on a man. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> More. Like them on a woman, strong and powerful. Don't like them on a man. Look, I like no. them if I don't have to have sex with you because it's very intimidating having to have sex with those abs. I just think it's rock solid. Like it's not, not and like aesthetically, I look at it and I just think you look like you've been puffed up. Or no, something. Like I love doll. No, I like it, but I wouldn't want to, you know, do bits with it because I, I would want to run. You know how women go to the um, what's it called, the pretty boys magic mic? Yeah, they go to magic mic live and they're gassed to no, run no, their no, hands no, down no, these no, abs. No. And I've I just done think, that. I've done that. I was one of those people. People. They're like pebbles. It's they disgusting. Are honestly like little pebbles. Right. It's so good. It doesn't feel like a body to me. Like, I'm all about soft curves, I think. But, babe, that's a bit of like double whatever you want to call it. I don't have the word right now. If it was a girl, you'd be like, yeah, strong and powerful. I love that. So, why can't my. No, have I. Us? Yeah, because I don't stroke girls because I'm straight. But I think if oh. I was gay, I'd say the same. Okay, yep. I'll let you have it. Thank you. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Not a hypocrite today! 
<laughs> oh my god, so she's really so shagging, she's shagging the great god. No, so she's shagging the great god, and I was like, it's so intimidating. And she was like, yeah, I sometimes have to just like turn the light off and then like run into bed so he doesn't because it's like too much. <laughs> How can you have sex with someone with abs like that? Yeah, also, you're clearly spending a lot of time thinking about <laughs> your abs, making your abs pop. No, no, listen, she was like, best sex of my life, la la la. But the problem is, as soon as we finish, she's so fucking boring, he's got nothing to say, and he's like, oh, got one no. It's fine, like, that's exactly what you need after you've been in a long relationship. Yeah, the that's what she's ever. looking for. Yeah, and she's not going to fall in love with him because he can't stimulate anything other than her clitoris. Precisely, but right, he can it. stimulate that extremely well. She was like, we were having like hardcore, like real time sex and his asshole was in the air and her mum walked in. <laughs> She was like, it's just something about being in your late 20s. Felt like teenagers, his asshole was like in the air. And Why her, did the mum just walk in? His, her mum was like, I texted you asking if you guys wanted dinner, but you didn't reply. And she was like, probably because I'm fucking knee deep in, you know, dick. Babe, I'm knee deep in dick, mum. Why would you not assume that? My mum would never, I don't think. I think she'd always go straight. She's a dirty woman. She goes straight to sex. She'd be like, if it's quiet up there, too quiet, they're shagging. Well, that's what I mean. What I you mean? know what I mean? Anyway, then the best part of the story is I was like, so tell me about like the sex. Like really, I want the real, real juicy gossip on the sex. She was like, yeah, it's like really great, la la la. And I was like, have you, you know, have you done anal? And she was like, oh yeah, all the time. We're doing it tomorrow, actually. And I was like, she found it, scheduled anal. And I was like, what? So she could, right. And I was like, what's the story? You book out time and you're dying for anal. She you must. Like, I've got to, because you gotta can't sure. do anal on a whim. And also, I'll tell you what, you got to be careful about what you eat the night before. Well, exactly. By the way, girls, no need to do anal if you don't want to do anal. Like if you don't like no, it, if you've tried it, like. Don't I, be performative for boys that like anal. It's none of your business. Like, if you I don't want to know the flag. what it feels like, the don't worry. anal is just feels like doing a massive dump. I'm sorry. Sometimes in a good way, I will say. Yeah, in a good way, but it's not. The problem is that I'm actually not having a dump. I'd rather have yeah, a dump. Yeah, I'd rather sit in my out. own time, scroll on Instagram, yeah, and get rather it out. than be boned right, from behind. Right, exactly. Also, if you've got a partner with a big schlong. That's a whole separate topic. If you've got a partner with a big schlong, dump him because big it's too much. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's not sustainable. It's not. It's not sustainable. And I feel sorry for them. Like, they've been glorified for so many years, but it's not practical. Totally agree. It's so unpractical. You can't be in a long term relationship with someone with a big schlong. No. Like, you've got to go and get the people to go. say anything else because I'm wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm rabid. Disgusting. Who am I? Oh, I'm so good. excited for this. The problem is, I think I could make this if I had a panini maker. I genuinely do not think you could achieve this with a toaster. I have a George Foreman. Do you? Yeah, I love a toasty. Wait, tell me about Astro Pharrell. Oh my God. Sorry, why don't you make toasties more then? Mm, I do actually, probably like, I make toasties at home more regularly than I would buy one out. Wow. Mr. Pharrell. Go. If you don't know, get to know. It's actually Esther. Is she Spanish? Flemish. Belgian. Like my uncle. Belgian! She's from Belgium. There aren't that many famous Belgians. I know. She's really flying the flag for Belgium. Yeah, she's flying the flag. The government should pay her a dividend. Uh huh. So, anyway. So, she's an amazing therapist. She does couples therapy. Her podcast is called Where Should We Begin? And it's actually incredible. You would love it. It's like couples therapy, the program, but in a podcast. So, you listen to them having a therapy session. Really? But it's like a one off, one time thing where they have a session with her talking about something Who would particular. agree to have their couples therapy broadcasted for everyone to hear? I know. I'm guessing you would with Esther Perel because it would probably be for free. And She's probably really spenny. Really so you went to the live show? Oh, it was amazing. Like, it was a bit interactive. Palladium? No. <laughs> Fuck sake, you were in the Palladium. <laughs> no, babe, it was at the Apollo. Again? Again. She tried to make it a bit interactive, like it was almost like a group therapy session for all of us in the audience. Mm. Like, you had to stand up, like, for certain things. She'd be like, okay, stand up if you've ever um, been intimate with someone and not have enjoyed it but not communicated that oh, drawing or something. Everyone, everyone stood, stood up. up. Oh, let me rephrase that. Every woman in the room stood up. Yeah, I oh, can't remember how she phrased it. It was really funny because there was like a secondary question. Oh, yeah. And then all the men that had stood up sat down and all the women stayed up. Oh, it would have been stage standing if you still came. Yeah. Because that's yeah, what would happen. Something like Even that. Even though a man wouldn't enjoy the sex, he would He'd still, still have them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could ask questions. Like, Did you ask one? No, I was really tempted. I don't really know what I would have asked. What kind of questions are people asking? Like, my husband's been cheating on me for five years. This one guy actually was really interesting. He just got married and he kind of couldn't really get his question out. So she like sent him back away and she was like, come back with what the question really is. She was like, you're asking a really good question, but you're making it generic because you're scared to ask the question you want to ask, which is about you. So go away and then come back. No. He was just married. His wife was also in the audience. He was basically saying, how do I deal with the expectations that I think are unrealistic now that we're married? 
married and she was like what expectations and he like was beating around the bush and then he was like that now we're married I can be constantly emotionally available for her so he was obviously struggling with the fact that now he was her husband no, and they're living together and blah 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 really? that at a drop of the hat he has to be emotionally available for her and he can't always do that and Esther was oh, basically that's saying interesting she was like it's fine that you can't be constantly emotionally available but it's how you communicate that to your partner that really matters and if you're the person who says no like Al I don't have the headspace for that right now I also have to be the person who comes back and goes mm. babe remember that thing you wanted to talk about I'm here now if you need me or anything I can help with because often it's like that lack of mm. communication of you and then they feel like they need to ask again and again and again they're constantly being let down or rejected and then that's what oh, creates that's this good. like she's good she spoke a lot about how bad our phones are what did she say oh I know the other day and then we were watching TV and <laughs> me and Holes and her <laughs> and me and Holes both on our phones and she's like Esther said you shouldn't go on your phone and watch TV at the same she time she said who gets home from work and goes straight and sits in front of the TV everyone stands up did they yeah who then also scrolls on their phone whilst watching TV everyone stays standing up it was really interesting how she spoke about the fact that we're kind of back in the day like historically we never relied on one person to be everything mm. because we had such a like sense of community mm. so you would never go the one wasn't a thing it wasn't the mm. one it was my husband and this is my husband's role or my partner's role mm. whereas now we're kind of like so infatuated with the idea That's of the so soulmate true. and they're my everything and blah 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 my best or friend I mean, my lover my and she was like it's really hard to have because you have to have both you, so you have hate and love disgust and lust like you're living together so you have all of these things that are married up it can't be everything all at the same time i have been saying that sorry esther that, that was actually my idea first <laughs> Sorry about all the psychotherapy degrees you did. <laughs> I don't know why you needed them. <laughs> Annie Matt got that years ago. Because people always say, but he doesn't have X, Y, and Z. I always say, are you getting that from someone else? Because if you are, it doesn't matter where you get that fill from. You just need you it. You have it in your life. life. I think that all the time about me, you, and Raw. Yeah. So much of what I don't the three get. Of us. Yeah. Because so much of what I need in my day to day life that he can't give me because he's probably not on the same emotional scale as we are. Like that thing that happened the other day when I called you. Yeah. We were having this conversation about it was an emotional conversation mm. his response was quite like reasonable and like mm. rational and logistical mm -hmm. and i quite black and white yeah and i in that moment i thought actually uh, whatever you say is going to be wrong so it doesn't really matter you're never going to say the right thing and some mm. people would get so hung up on the fact that in those moments they can't give you what you want to hear yeah i don't need to hear it from him then i called her straight away and i heard exactly what i wanted yeah. it doesn't matter where you get that stuff from as yeah. long as your cup is full it doesn't matter who which but obviously like i think you know there's a bare minimum but sure like, but like it's just about monitoring like what's realistic and what's unrealistic to ask from one person like they're just a person I'm a human sorry. being you don't give one person anything no yet. no and you won't give them everything and even if you don't like to think that because you think you do you don't you can't interesting yeah it was really interesting i just loved it i loved her i felt quite heavy afterwards and really in my feels really in my thoughts about my relationships and and how to kind of like are you thinking and feeling i guess i was feeling a tiny bit world weary just about like you know how monogamy isn't this kind of like realistic sacred like thing anymore it's kind of something to be like you know we're living longer and it's harder to obtain like it's more unrealistic to say you're going to be with someone for your whole life because your life is so long now and like there is so much like infidelity and cheating and it makes me feel sad that we can't like communicate that before it gets to that stage yeah and then yeah i guess also just like she was talking about kind of like intimacy and what we asked for and i think any conversations like that when they're really thought-provoking you can feel quite like whoa it was really sweet they did this bit in the middle where she kind of like what's one text you wish you could send and like these little texts would pop up and it'd be like i'm sorry can we start again or like please can i come home like or just all these things that you're just like oh my god it can go so wrong like it can go so wrong why do you think i've got a fear of abandonment fear of abandonment yeah it all go tits up oh do you know what she was saying this is really interesting in a relationship tell me you probably know this from therapy but there's always one person who has a fear of abandonment a fear that the person will leave yeah. and there's the other one that has a fear of suffocation really yeah so it's a scale obviously you might lean more towards one and one someone might be extreme in it someone Fast might not aging. be so extreme but there's someone that will feel like suffocated like held down blah 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 and there's another there's the other side that will fear losing which one do you think you are? And the, the fear of suffocation is fear of losing yourself. Oh, I'm fear of suffocation. I was going to say, I think you're suffocation. Colin's definitely fear of abandonment. He won't know that. Also, <laughs> me and you. 
That's probably our dynamic. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. I highly recommend her. Just take it all in. She did an epic TED talk. That's how most people know her. Good. I love that. Mm -hmm. I really do love that. Very, very good. I had a great night. Oh, one thing I will say. Go on. I actually think, and I know this is strong, if you've got a cough, don't come to the theatre. Oh, yeah, duh. Why are you spluttering everywhere? They, duh. Everyone knows that. They don't know that clearly because there were so many people coughing over Esther. No, it's the same on the tube. Mm. I find it more offensive on the tube. Yeah, on well, the tube's difficult though, I guess, because, you know, you've got to get from A to B. Esther's a luxury. You have to stay at mm, home, my friend. That's true. I'm afraid. That is true. Babe, if you had had a cough, you would have gone. I know. So don't be a selfish little bitch. I'd have been embarrassed and I'd have been like this. <coughs> trying to hold it in. <coughs> This is good. This is good. It's not eight pounds good. Sorry, Joe. It's not bad. Here is Joe. Oh, we have to tell you last night his name is Chris. Joe and the Juice guy. Wait, what? Oh, I was talking about Joe from oh. Joe and the Juice. Talk um, about the Wajian. Talking about the Wajian, but I'm also talking about how our face IDs are the biggest, honestly, the snakiest snakes on the planet. I don't know who's got it out for us at Apple. It was so funny because I was just saying to Al, I was like, oh, I don't think we look that different <laughs> when we glow up. Like, because we don't like contour or do anything. Like, we're not that good at makeup. Like, you're Speak better than for me. It's self, babe. Do you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was saying, I don't think we look that different. Anyway, both of us had a full face on yesterday. Couldn't unlock our phone screens. Not for the life no, of us. No, like, honestly, not for the life of us. Mm -mm. Three, four tries, still enter passcode. No idea who we were. A little bit. I thought, how rude. Oh, babe, I need to borrow your hairdressing scissors, by the way. Okay. Well, when I say that, I mean, you need to help me. Okay. Well, I need to cut your hair. Trim my bangs. Shit. They're getting a bit <laughs> dog eery. We met this guy last night, Chris. He'll Chris. probably watch this because he said um, he watches them and he loved Raw. By the way, sorry, now I've had my, my energies come back. Good, you were hungry. Have you still got snacks back there? Oh my God, you've still got Toblerone. Oh! I think I can have another Toblerone. Have so they not melted? No, because they're in the shade. They have a dark one. I'm like, obviously. I'm gonna go milk. The number of people who were like, oh my God, Raw. And I'm thinking, what? What the hell? Babe, you don't let Raw shine enough. He did, He's a very good boy. I know, but he didn't even want to do it. Now we're walking into rooms and people are asking us about Rory as if we're his agents. What is that? Up the child. That's a joke. Oh, Raw. He's famous now. Hashtag famous. He doesn't know what to do about it. He's hashtag famous. Anyway, we met this guy, Chris Smith, who um, said that we're smashing it. But he then also, I just realised, watched, kind of watched us dance like people who had been let out of a mental institution. I night. was dancing like a nutter last night because A, I didn't have feet that worked <laughs> because my shoes were so horridious. I'm going to email ASOS. I'm telling you now they're not going to do that. I'm going to say I'm sorry. It's disgusting that you're selling something which is designed for me to walk in and I cannot walk. Oh. I'll show them my broken feet. That's what I'll show them. He said that he's a Asian. And I was like, ha, 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 yeah. And then I got you in. You didn't the... really clock it, did you, babe? We got in the Uber and I was like, what the hell is a Asian? She was like, what? <laughs> A West well, Asian. Because he was loving you because we were both West Asian. But, but you could think it's Euro Asian. Yeah, but I thought he was talking about West Asian, like the Western half of Asia. And I was like, no, I'm from Southeast Asia, like Singapore. Yeah. Malaysia. And then you were like, no, no, look, because your dad's white. It's called Eurasian. European Asian. It's mm. literally called Eurasian. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. To burst your bubble. Love you so still. But like, I think he meant like a Western Asian. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe he's not half half. Maybe a Asian is someone who's 100% Asian. Like my mum. From the West of Asia. No, who's living in the West. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe he's not mixed Asian. Maybe he's... That's then my mum would be a Asian. She's a Asian. Yeah, got it. Asian persuasion. Got it. Either way, I like it. I like it a lot. You know, and there was something else as well. Oh, I've chucked that down the side of the seat. Never to be seen again. Oh, yeah. We were talking last night when the face ID didn't notice us. That I... <sighs> <laughs> in my little silver dress, if it was green, I look like a cucumber. Got it. Got it! You do look like a cucumber. You kind of feel like a cucumber too. There's something about you that's quite cucumber -esque. I actually think that is the best description yeah. we've ever had. Ever. Ever. I am a cucumber. That is such a good description of me. What would you be? I'm a papaya. No. I am. Or like... No, you're a cantaloupe. <laughs> it's a cantaloupe. <laughs> An antelope. <laughs> I kind of eat this orange melon. The little ones. A kumquat. Babe, are you okay? And no, I'm not okay. No, I'm sorry. This, this episode is <laughs> wangy. Wow. You're hungover. You are. Babe, <laughs> let me know and tell me you're not feeling a little bit 
choo choo. This morning I woke up and I thought, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> You need this week to be over. I'm done. You need a bath. Apparently, I need something about Libra and Mercury. I don't know. Libra season. Do you know what a cantaloupe is? Guys, my birthday's coming around thick and fast. Oh, yeah, God. My God, don't we all know it? I hope you've all got your prezzies ready. I'm such a Libra when it comes to birthdays. I, I just want to be the centre of attention. That's not just on your birthday, babe. That's a really. This is a cantaloupe. No, sometimes I really like to. Why am I that? I am quite that. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I don't even like the orange melon the most. Rock melon or a sweet melon. Oh, I'm a sweet melon. That's the same thing. Yeah, I'm a sweet melon. Cantaloupe. I told you, she is a cantaloupe and I'm a cucumber. If we could rebrand. If we were to be animals, what would we be? I'd be an Afghan hound. Oh, yeah. Oh, we said you... this before and you said I'd be a giraffe, which was just stupid. No, babe, you said I'd be a little green canary because I was wearing a green dress. Oh, but like, yeah, but get... like in our characters. Hey, this is quite a fun game where you always play this with my family. So you say what you think you are. How you perceive yourself as an animal is always different to how other people an perceive African you. An African greyhound. An Afghan hound. I'll show you. Show me right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Sorry, not. That is me. No, it's not. That is me. I've got the long face and the long hair. That is me. Babe. They're not prettiest, are they? Bless them. And I kind of have the same nose even. I'm an Afghan hound. Dark. I am. That's me. Wow. What are you? I don't know. In my animal studies at drama school, I was a mallard duck and I really became <laughs> quite attached to the mallard duck. And you know another one I did? I did a beaver and everyone loved my beaver. I was going to say, I think you're something really like strange. I think I'm like Mrs. Beaver. You're like, not. you're not an animal. I mean, you're not, you're not, you're not a dog. You're not a feline. No. You're not a bird. And you're not like a, like a tree inhabiting species. Like, <laughs> I'm a reptile. Like a monkey, you're not a reptile. So then, I, then what's left? Like a warthog. A duck. A duck. A duck. I think I'm quite duck-like. Yeah, you are. And you've got big feet too. Yeah, they just bob along. They dip their heads down. Big they eat are. bread. Loads of bread. I love bread. It's one of my favourites. You are a duck. I think I'm a duck. Dog a mallard the, duck. The dog in the duck. I became so attached to the duck. I would be in duck for hours on end when I was at drama yeah, school. You are a duck. Yeah. The only other thing you could be is like a like a chimp. But I don't actually think you're naughty enough to be a chimp. No, Chimps I'm not really very naughty. naughty. I'm quite follow the rules. Yeah. Quite nervous of rule breaking. I've learned. Someone once said I was like a monkey. You're quite rule breaky. You're like that monkey in um in oh, the Hangover. No. The drug dealing oh, monkey. Oh yes. That's what you're like. So yeah, B-Day season for, for Miss Georgina. Yeah, I love it. I love my birthday. I love everyone buying me presents and things. I love I it. I love being the center of attention. I actually do. Babe, I have to show you this thing when, I, when we stop. Go on. About the favorite crisps in the UK. The flavors? Yeah, have you seen it? No. Some... Do you remember when they used to do those competitions to like plan a new flavor? And you had to think about what flavor you would have and people were so weird. They'd be like sausage and mashed crisps. What? Yeah, or like really weird flavours. I'll tell you where it has really weird flavours is Asia. Crisp flavours in Asia are something else. Like what? Like fish. Yeah, and like Codro. They have Codro crisps. You know those little popping balls on sushi? That's what Codro is. Oh, yeah. The orange thing. But it's I like love so them. salty. And I wouldn't want to eat crisps like that. No, I just remember it was like a competition. I can't remember like what one or something. But do you remember they used to like... Babe, sorry, but that's me and you. <laughs> In Wait, any hold it part up, of my I can't life. Hold my phone. Wow! Oh my god, who did this really lovely painting of us? That's <laughs> so kind. We didn't even ask. Oh, that's funny. If you were a dog, you'd be a beagle. A beagle? Yeah, I think you'd be a beagle. No, they're so ugly, beagles. Are they? Yes. They're not uglier than a mallard duck, that's for sure. Mallard ducks are quite pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I look quite pretty. Actually, you are because mallard ducks eat people's scraps and you do that all the time. I know, I would eat off a plate happily. Yeah, you know, when you I used to work at really that pub. I would eat the chips off a plate. A mallard duck. I find it hard to sit next to a table of people and when they finish, not lean over and go, so sorry if you're finished with that, can we have it? Babe, did you not hear on the radio? Someone did that. This is so. What did they catch? No, no. 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 You're going to tell me they got like chlamydia or something? No. Them? This guy at Pizza Express was sitting at Pizza Express having his pizza and then the guy opposite like got up and just left like three quarters of a pizza. So he just ate it? Yeah, and then the guy came back and was like, I just went for a cigarette. <laughs> Mortified. Mortified. And then he had, and then the guy like doubled down on the line and was like, the waiter said I could eat it and that you'd finish. The waiter was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Horrendous. That is my worst nightmare. I that, mean, I wouldn't be so she, bold. I, that, but that would happen to you. Someone like something like that would happen to you. I just know it. Oh my god, that makes me feel so nervous. I just so know it. Nervous. Can you believe the um, posh and Bex thing? Oh my.
my gosh, I was gonna say we need to talk about that. Have you seen all of the beef? Okay, so what's the beef? The beef is that Nicola, they... Nicola and Victoria hate each other. Who's Nicola? Brooklyn Beckham's new wife. Baby, no, the billionaire. Nicola Perez. Yes. Is she a billionaire? Her well, she's is, not, is her she? Dad her dad is. Her dad is a multi, mm. multi, multi billionaire. Billionaire. So, so what? That you can see that in the dock? Well, no, I'm watching no, it. no, 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 no. Of course you can't see that in the dock, but they never tag each other. They tag everyone else. And also, Victoria Beckham always like, because Romeo's girlfriend, Mimi, Mia, Mimi Mucha, you know, the blonde model? Yeah. She, Victoria's like always posting her and like always making clothes for her and like never post anything about Nicola. And then they went all to this thing and the whole tea is that they were all wearing neutrals and Nicola was wearing red. And it was like, oh my God, you're not fitting in. You're trying to like take away from, I mean, I would do it. If you're trying to make a silent point. Yes, you're trying you your to clothes. kind of protest. Yeah, you've got to in do it in a very for your subtle clothes. way. Celebrities do that all the time. They use their clothes to make a point. Yeah, very interesting. Like when they all wore black for yeah. the Me Too thing. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah. I can imagine them not liking each other because I can imagine he, Brooklyn. Yeah. The oldest. Is he the oldest? Yeah. That he's like her kind of golden child. Yeah. And maybe that like no one's ever going to be good enough for her. Him. Yeah. Oh, oh, look stop. at them. I went to that school. I love when you have to no, walk in twos. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. I went to the next door. One up. I did. I went to that one just there. When? Oh, Okay. Stop doing your face whilst you're driving. <laughs> just take your little oil touch up. Goodness gracious. I went to that school just there, Parkgate. That's funny, isn't it? Do you want to know something really weird? I kind of forget that people actually grow up in London. Do you want to know something really weird? Go on. My One of my oldest friends, we went to school together. When we got there, we realised that we both lived on the same road, which is just by Clapham Junction. We were live, we lived four doors up from each other. The best. Until we were both four years old. Yeah. Never knew each other. Our mums gave birth on the same floor of the same hospital. No. And we just happened to be in the same house at boarding school one night. No. And then our, yeah, and we found this out. And now our parents are like, that, she's the one we spent Christmas together. Like, she's like my cousin. Stop. Yeah. How weird is that? And we both lived on that same street. That is so weird. weird. Did you do Pony Club? Yeah, I did, and I hated it. Did you? I, I never did Pony Club. I had, did you not? No. I actually would have put you down as a horse as a horse I used child. to ride, but I'm really allergic. Oh, yeah, cool. I didn't do pony club. No, I didn't do pony club. I did riding lessons. Yeah, I did riding lessons what's, for a bit and then I was so allergic. What's the difference between pony club and riding lessons? Babe, pony club is like pony club. What does that mean? You know, all the kids go to pony club. You go on camps, you do like competitions, I think. I don't know, I'm not on the inside. The kids I nannied for used to do pony club. Oh, why did It was know so that. funny. So once I was going to Secret Garden Party when I was like 19. I was working as a nanny in a, on a bar at the time. Anyway, I went to Secret Garden Party and I totally forgot that I didn't just have a normal day at work on Monday. We had a pony club rally. I had to go to the pony club rally with the three, like, wow, you know, my little posh kids. And I had my, I'd, you know, been having a good time at a secret garden party. A little bit extraterrestrial. Might have to, yeah. Turn extra up. Extraterrestrial? Do you mean extracurricular? Oh, yeah. Extraterrestrial is like yeah, aliens. No. I left this planet, baby. <laughs> yeah, I had to canter around a bloody field with the Rosie on the oh, horse. I was actually And I was bombing. Every... I was literally bombing in my mouth. All the pony club mums, the stuck up pony club mums were staring at me thinking I was an absolute waste man, which I was. And it was a horrible, horrible day. That's all I know of Pony Club. I don't know, like, I do have a lot of appreciation for horses, but I just think, like, they could really, like, kick, you know, knock yeah, you out. they're quite scary. Yeah, they could knock you out with one hoof. Yeah, one hoof and you're gone. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, baby. God, you're so broody. Yeah. You need a friend that has a baby. I know. And then it's going to, like, dull it I know. for you just I know. to never Ideally, yeah, exactly. No, so I do on. like it. And I like the mums that go full mum. I think good. Like, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. I'm here for I it. just think it's not never going to be me to be full mum. So we've got to tell you about what happened last night. It's what very, happened last night? Very interesting. Go what? On. About the questions. Stay or leave. Oh, it was quite it rowdy. Was quite, so yeah. the guy, what was his name? Was the MC. I can't remember his name. One extra, but his kid was amazing. I mean, he was struggling with the crowd, wasn't he? Because it mean, was a rowdy and crowd. He did a good job. He did a really hard. good job because that is hardcore. Anyway, he had to ask these like divisive questions, obviously, kind of like centered around relationships, relationships so, and then married we, at first and sight, then we whatever. had all of these. We had these two cards. One said stay, one said leave. Yeah. He would ask us a question like, "This is good actually," because I wonder what everyone else thinks. Because on some of them, I was really torn. We're well, not torn actually. On none of them, quite, I was torn. Yeah, I think they were all quite obvious actually. So the first one was if he was earning oh sorry Go one on. of them was really silly and it was like if they couldn't drive would you still date them and everyone was like leave leave and the girl next to us was like do you think you expect me to be taking public transport to my date what i was like number one don't worry about it i drive we can't both drive at the same time number two so like it's okay i've got a license number two i think you'll survive the bus the tube or the tram yeah and number three get an uber especially the tram very very good get an uber that is what uber's 
It hasn't fallen. <laughs> Standing up. Yeah, and then the other one was if he didn't <clears throat> earn, he did do he a gendered. Earned, he was gendered that question. If he earned, yeah, you're right. If he earned less, less than, than you, you, would you stay or leave? But I think you could apply that for anyone. If your partner earned less than you, would you stay or leave? Yeah. And we were both like, stay, because that will be us one day when we're making 30 million quid each. Do you know what I mean? ITV giving what us do you a expect? Bit, yeah, right. It's going to be difficult to find someone. Got some pocket money, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone said leave. Everyone was and like, we, leave. We looked what? They were all like, so it was so bad. They were like, what kind of man? Call yourself a man. I'm not like, my oh. man to like provide for me. Oh, I don't so know. Listen, it sits uncomfortably in me. Listen, I was having this conversation with my school friends the other day about someone about someone that they know who's just got married, had a baby. I can't actually remember who this was about, but whatever, the principle is, this person's just got married, had a baby and wants to not go back to work to look after the baby because like the cost of childcare would be more, it's like financially would make more sense. Yeah, which I totally get. Like, I think there is a conversation to have around that, for sure. For sure. And then she was like, yeah, like the shift in power has changed. Like she said to one of the girls, like, oh, I want this new coat from Suzanne. So he's going to take me to go and buy it. And I just thought that's being trapped. It's really really hard but it's not your money like like having to like ask for money to buy a coat or like a jumper or a dress do you know what I mean like to me it's so alien one thing I will say though is I know someone that was proper like career woman really driven like quite high up in her field had a baby quite later in life the baby's like one and a bit now she always said she was so steadfast in like of course I'm gonna go back to work you mad I'm gonna blah, blah, blah. doesn't wanna go she doesn't wanna leave the baby it's the hormones something happens and I get it and also it's a lot to juggle like switching between heads must be so overwhelming yeah you know, when you've got to put your like mum head on it must be like oh my god what a nightmare like it's a lot to juggle oh, I know and then you've got to deal with the guilt when you're away I, I mean I think it's easy for us to say because we haven't had babies but yeah so I, we don't really know I think the guilt must be because you feel like you're not being a present mother but for me being a mother is so much more than just like being in the space it's yeah like you want to be a role your model and, well, and, yeah, yeah. I want my children to watch me work yeah and think life doesn't end just because you have a child yeah you know? mm. it is a funny debate and it is divisive and I do think you have to be careful because I agree everyone's different and what, what's right for one person won't be the right for the exactly next. and also even what's right for them now like yes. even pre kids middle kids after kids like will all be different and I'm not judging anyone's decisions I'm just saying personally when I hear stuff like that I think oh my god that's even more reason for me to not want to give up give ever give yeah. up work. I actually also think like it's not even necessarily about you know it doesn't matter if you're earning three four hundred pounds like at mm. least you feel like that four hundred pounds is, is yours, yours to spend on your Coat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Listen, don't get me wrong. I think I can make a day of it. This is what I need to talk to you about. Tell me. I need a new job. Right. What are we going to do? Only fans feet? No, but genuinely. Babe, babe, babe. Apparently the uglier your feet, the more money you make. You can make an absolute Babe, killing. my feet aren't that bad. I think that... Have you looked at most people's feet, babe? No one likes feet. Yeah, and OnlyFans fans. I don't want to do OnlyFans. I'm thinking I might like to be a cleaner or a housekeeper. I really think I'd enjoy that. I'll go, I'll big. hoover, I'll clean. I used to be a cleaner at an Airbnb and I loved it. Apart from when we had stag do's in, I didn't love it so much then. Yeah, you got to wash the semen out the loo and No stuff. one's found a used condom. And a lot of sick. Oh, that's disgusting. They love to throw up. Sick doesn't, the semen wouldn't bother me. It's, it's the vomit for me that really tips no, me No, babe. A, a, a heavy sperm-filled condom wouldn't bother you. Put what? Sorry. Yeah, what happened there? I don't want to know. I didn't ask. If you, yeah, you said I'm a very good cleaner. I don't clean my house very well because I often, often got the time. But I think if I was getting paid for it, I'd I do think it. that you could do it for like someone really rich. Um, yeah, but I could just do two hours every morning. Do you know how much cleaners charge? Mine charge means 15 an hour. 15 an hour! That's more than you'll get anywhere else, actually. Very good! Hey, that's actually a great idea. Yeah, I'd like it. I could put my headphones in, toot toot hoovering. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Ha. You could even charge 20. Why not? They, rich people would pay. When I'm good, I'll get in all the nooks and crannies. She actually, I actually would back you to do that. Yeah, I could be a cleaner. Sure. Done it before. And also, you don't. I cleaned a sink or two. No startup costs, because they have all the stuff. Well, different cleaners do different things. Some people like to bring their own bits. No, don't bring your own bits. I can bring my own bits. What, what bits? Go to Aldi. But what bits do you Get need? Get all my bits. What? My cleaning bits. You might just be need some slippers and some gloves, but other than that, they definitely should, need gloves. They should have cleaning products under their sink. What if they don't? Definitely need bleach. You always need to have bleach on you and Viacil. She knows. Yeah. Have you ever cracked your skull open? <laughs> 
No, but I was That's telling like you this. like a rite of passage when people. Telling you this story about my thumb the other day, and then we got called by my mum who told us about Downton Abbey Lady. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you see this thumb scar? Oh yeah. Do you know the story about this? No. What happened? It's actually really bad if you look at it. It's like the whole way up my Shit. thumb. Shit. So what happened was I was at school. We had these like studies in our houses where you like where you do your homework and stuff in your boarding house. Every year has a different one. And the year above, I said like come round the back of ours and like scared us all through the window. So anyway, the following week, I went round with my friends to do it, and they were like, "You do it, you do it." So I. I did it but obviously like I just was so careless and like bullying a china shop I went straight through the window and the whole thing this is actually not an exaggeration you I'm, went through the window my hands went through the window and the hot it sliced half my thumb off like what? obviously like I would say half of it like so much of my thumb was missing like right to the bone you could see the bone and Cry. obviously but, but it was also like gushing Shock. with blood like so I can't explain it was we so, were in so much trouble no no Why would you not, throw yourself no, through no, a window really. I was just like they got, took me to A&E straight away like it was really really bad and then then the next week I have probably got pictures. Did you get stitches? No babe, I had to go on my D of E. <laughs> and then I went on D of E and it was like torrential rain <laughs> and I, then it got infected and then it got pussy. It's not right. No, it was really bad. And then they were like, we've got to give you a skin graft. Anyway, it just eventually grew back and it's kind of minging. No, it's fine. It's, it's a good story. It's a good story. Can you bend it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like totally normal. I did at one point think I'm going to have to have my thumb amputated. How am I going to do anything with one opposable no, thumb? No, but can I tell you my Aunt Jo? She cut her fingers here with a glass and it went through her tendons or something and now her fingers are frozen like this she's got a claw yeah she can't move her hand she's like this she's got a claw oh babe yeah have you ever cracked a skull open no what's the worst thing you've ever done broke my arm that was quite bad because my hand kind of hanged down here and it was really gross my whole hand was like down here it was disgusting gross don't get ill very often like poorly like as in hurt i don't get hurt very often you get often. ill every other week but i don't really get hurt haven't been hurt inside you have been only in my heart. Oh no, I'll tell you what was really bad. When I was in Bali, I was on the back of this um, moped. And I was wearing flip-flops really stupidly. I got third degree burns from the exhaust on the bottom of my foot. And I had to go and get it all dressed in Bali. And then I had to walk around with it. That's actually swim. not a joke. If you're going to do those things, it's wear weird. shoes. No, it's so stupid. That's you can't go travelling and yeah. do that stuff. It's stupid. It's so stupid. Wow, that is stupid. The flip-flop got stuck in the wheel and then it pulled my foot into the exhaust, basically. Oh my happened. God. Yeah, really bad. Oh no, that's actually a, a word of warning. Yeah, no, that was horrendous. Wow. Yeah. Babe, you look like a bathroom. I've just discovered, realised. Bathroom tiles in a shower. Kind of love it. Okay, I can deal with that. Yeah, bathroom. Maybe you could um go and work for all. Should I work for all? I could be a labourer. I'd like to be a labourer. <gasps> no, no, I don't think you would. I could learn. The boys could teach me. I'd be good. The good thing about it, I'll tell you what is the good thing about it, is that if you work, you get paid. And if you don't work, you don't, you don't have to do anything. I like it. I need a job with a perk. Yeah. Or like on the reception of a hairdresser. Maybe I think cleaning's a good idea. I just want a part-time job, guys. What's the perk of cleaning? You get all the hour, rest of the hours in the day. True. That is true. You get to go to work, clock in, clock out. It's quite active as well. It's kind of like a workout. And you might see some really nice houses. Snoopy snoops. And you might meet some fun people. I could look in some bedside drawers. Some Sometime, yeah. Oh, yes. Very and good. you might find people's like, you know, mistresses, lipsticks or something that you might have to hide. That's what happens when you're rich and you have cleaners that you trust. You tell them to hide the lipsticks. And that the is so dark. I hate that there's people out there that do that. I think you're should. I think you should. I think that most people know. Can I say, I think that I know that cheating is gross, but I do think more than you might think people know that they're being cheated on. No, but some people really have the carpet ripped from under them, babe. I know, but I'm saying, so. I think more than we might... I know. I know. I know. I anyway, than... community service for you. Yeah. Oh, let me, show you no. the, let me show you the crisp thing. Oh, yeah, go on. Did I send it to you? Oh, yes, we've all been holding our breath for that. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Shut up. What are you going to do to have a better week this week? To not see anyone. Yeah, I was going to say, probably Because everyone else is annoying you. It's not actually you. Sad, yeah. It's actually so... I am so not the problem. <laughs> The problem is, in all of the situations, you're the only constant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I don't know that that's true. Oh no, where is this thing? Where would I have saved it? Up your bum? <laughs> Up your bum is the best joke ever. I don't think there's a better joke than up your bum. Oh, got it! Here we go. Right, a nation divided. This crisp census. Scotland is most likely to eat their, listen. Wait, listen. go. Scotland is most likely to eat their Walker's crisps. In with, their sandwich. With oh. mayo. 
Dip, dip it in dip mayo. It in mayo. Yeah. I love mayo, but I wouldn't do that. I mean, I would eat mayo with ice cream, but I still wouldn't do that. You wouldn't eat mayo with ice cream. Don't be so disgusting. A fifth of Northern Ireland enjoy their Walker's crisps with chocolate. I have tried that. Very delicious. Would One recommend, bite. especially a ready salted. One bite. One cube. We had to talk about ready salted. You can't beat it. You can't beat a well salted crisp. The Northwest has actually dabbled with their Walker's crisps dunked in tea. That is not a joke. Surely it just falls off. Sorry, yeah. sorry. And also just get a bourbon out of the pot. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> have a custard cream and have a day off. Get a bourbon out of the oven. Uh, oh, sorry. Penguins. Has anyone had a penguin bar recently? Alexandra McIntosh came to my house, right? And she loves to do this. She slags I know, everything no, this off. Is, babe, get used to it. This is my whole life. It's jarring. You must stop. My life. I slag it off and then I love it. No, Don't. no, but she comes to your house, right? She'll come to your house. I do it with everything. She'll look around. She'll slag everything off. She'll say <laughs> what she doesn't have, what she wants, what she's not in Their stock. Their house is like a barren land. There's yeah, no she's slags. like, I hate it. Like one hot, one I don't know why I'm here. And I'm like, go then. One avocado and a block of cheese in the fridge. And it's like, yeah, we've got a really full fridge today. No, Annoying. There's nothing in the fridge. Anyway, she's there like, nothing. penguins! We're buying penguins! Penguins! I'm like, that penguins are actually really nice. I Alexandra. Mean, they piss off with me as well, it's so funny. Anyway, then, she's chomping on this penguin having the time of her life. She's going, oh, oh, what is this? Oh, it's so good. And I'm just like, you are mental. I do it all the time with everything. Like, yeah. I, have to, I have, the problem is, if I do it too publicly, problem, then I, I'm like beholden to, to the Yes, thing. now you've got to hate penguins. Well, it's like her gluten intolerance. Yeah. It wavers often. <laughs> and you're quite well, public with your gluten selective. intolerance. Gluten intolerance, yeah. <laughs> Very selective. We've got selective hearing and selective gluten You're basically intolerance. like, is it worth it? Yeah. Like, is it worth the bloat and the cramps? I don't know. Yeah, like yesterday I wouldn't have touched it because I had to get into that dress, but the, today I've got... Oh, but also, no, road, you wouldn't have... She didn't here. bother with the wedding cake yesterday, did you? It wasn't good enough for you, so no, you thought was, I won't bother. It wasn't. Actually, if they served me that at my actual wedding, I would have thrown it in their faces. Well, you wouldn't go dry vanilla, would you? No. What should I the cake? Red velvet. Really? You don't like red velvet? No. There's this one place called Cutter and Squidge. Maybe I'll get your birthday cake from there. No, it is the most, uh, no, no, no. I actually, like, I'm like a cake connoisseur. In lockdown, <laughs> do you know? <laughs> Baby, in lockdown, I thought about applying to Bake Off. That's how, I really love cake. Can you bake? Yeah, really. You can't just go on because you enjoy eating cake. No, no, I baked, baked. Can Jenna's I just show you all of the things? Just don't move, don't leave. Don't leave me. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Don't leave me. <laughs> These were all the things I baked in lockdown. Wow. And I only wrote down the good ones and there were a lot of mishaps. You wrote down a hummingbird cake. Courgette lemon and thyme I could really, really work with because I love a courgette cake. In the whole world. I, make it, I made that for his birthday every year. He loves it. Does he? BBC recipe, yeah. Didn't see him as a courgette cake kind of man. Anyway, yeah, I know. Neither. These people surprise you all the time. People that Listen, you he's the gift that keeps on giving, people aren't that, people, You think you know people. <laughs> you don't know anyone. Yeah. You don't. Mm. That's what we keep saying about my at first sight. You might love them that day, but you don't love all of them because you don't know. You don't know. You don't know them. That's the whole thing. I'm still it? learning things about myself. That's what's so beautiful about getting older, I think. Yes, because you could just be shot by someone. No, or yeah, about, I didn't know you like that. Or by yourself. Thinking that the other day. Or about yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's quite fun to discover new things about yourself. <laughs> You've got to allow yourself to do it. You've got to not put yourself in too many boxes. Sorry, last thing before we get out of this car. Please. I'm cured. I am cured. Of? Loneliness. I didn't. <laughs> I <laughs> didn't miss him once, babe. Very good. I'm really proud of you. Heaven, no, babe. But you were filling it with a lot of other things. So maybe yeah, that, that is, is true. I was like going 100 miles an hour. I didn't actually have one night by myself. But I did think the Cured might be strong, but on the way to healing, <laughs> yeah. perhaps. I think cured might be too strong. Yeah, maybe. But I, the bed by yourself really is just oh, so nice. Wow. So, so nice. I but, actually have a king bed in my flat currently and I definitely couldn't do without it. I have a king, but I think we need a super. Yours yeah. doesn't look like a king. It's because you've got so many bloody pillows I on know, it. It's small in there. It is small. It does feel small, actually. I agree. Well, my mum and dad are talking about this at the moment. They want to, <laughs> they want those beds oh, that are yeah. two separate mattresses but the that. same bed. My has that. But my dad, he wants it like a hotel room. He wants a bedside cabinet in the middle. My mum was like, are you Matt, are you for real? Is he okay? Oh. He wants his own bed. I mean, to be fair, at 80, have whatever the hell you want. Fair play. <laughs> Let the man have a good night's sleep. Right, shag, marry, kill. Adam Collard, Nathaniel from Maths. 
Adrian. Adrian from last night. Oh, no, no, sorry, it was Charlene. Oh, tricky. Well, no, actually, easy. I tracked Charlene, because she's a sex therapist. Oh, okay. Hoping she'll be good in the sack. Good, yeah. Um, I'm marrying Nathaniel, because I think he's so calm, kind, and considerate. Killing Alan Collard, because he's a waste of space. Easy. I think I'd actually marry Charlene. Yeah, what, shag Nathaniel? Yeah. Yeah, fair. Sexy man. Snog, marry, kill. George from maths. Okay. He wouldn't like me. I might tits are too small. Yeah, he'd be so disappointed. <laughs> but it's a huge babe. Babe, he wanted double D's. Imagine if he got me and my tubular no, breasts. No, he'd just walk away. He'd be so let down. <laughs> Walk away. Punchy. You know when he goes, I want to see those titties, and he'd be like, oh, put the titties away. <laughs> he'd go, oh, no, what is it? Oh, sacre bleu. Georges from Maths. Yep. Paul Hollywood, aka Bake Off fame. Oh, God. Mm, doesn't do it for me. Brooklyn Beckham. Tough, tough decisions. Very, very serious that you get this right. Kill Paul, I think. He's a bit old and a bit grey. And his hair is You're too... You're killing Paul over George, over Titty George. Yeah, because I think he would be actually okay in the sack. Paul would put bake for you all the time. He's having a sourdough a day. <laughs> he made you wear no, velvet no, whenever you wanted no, it. Because I'm going to marry Brooklyn and shag George. Gold digger. Yes, I I'm am. saying it with my chest. Yeah, I am a gold digger. If you're going to be a gold digger, do it loud. You know, I'm proud. Don't, yeah, be loud and proud about it. Don't pretend like you're not. If you're a gold Yeah, I like that. Listen. It is a profession. <laughs> Because you've got to find them, you've got to catch the right ones, you've got to wear the right things, yeah. you've got to have the it right titties. It is a full titties. time job to find rich people to go out with and marry. It is. So if Brooklyn Beckham was handed to me on a silver platter, would I say no? Fuck hell. When you're shagging George? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and I just think I would blindfold myself and get through it. You know? Oh Probably. god, he's not that bad. Blindfold's a bit strong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think maybe he gives me the creeps a bit. But you're about to shag him. Yeah, babe, I just was, that's what I said. Pa paper bag, blindfold. He can Lie back and think of England. He would probably have to do the same, babe. He'd take one look at my tits and say, not big enough. And I'd say, you've got, you got to do this. Sorry. Get it on. Get it up and get it on. Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Giddy up, cowboy. Who do you coucher avec moi? Ce soir? Horrible. I'm definitely shagging Paul Hollywood every day of the week. Babe, really? He's about 75 years old. I like older men. Sorry. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if they're not grey, would you actually shag? They're not for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we must go. This is just a complete fucking. Silver fox. Okay. Show me your cocks. <laughs> <laughs> OAP! Babe, stop talking. Yes, to me. We're please. We're never gonna get a job anymore. <laughs> We're never gonna get a job. Ever. Get a job. I'm joking, obviously. She's not joking. Bye! Drop okay, my card, love you, bye. I didn't mean to do my day. Don't Don't worry, Olivia, we do know the lyrics for any teasing. Yeah, drive me home then. I see my mirrors and I can't see you. No, I don't want to, I want to turn it off before we go there. No, no, bye. Bye. <laughs> She's going to drive me home, but we've got to go now because otherwise you'll know where she lives. I'm not going home now. I'm going my home. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know you're not driving me home. Duh. Driving me home to your home. Yeah. Yeah. My other home. Okay. My second home. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye, love you. Sorry that we're so wacky today. I think it's just the it's weather. The, it's the Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> love you. Love you, bye.